The D1 and D2 pathways are so fundamental to us as movement disorder specialists, but we had no drugs that interacted with the D1 pathway. So in the studies of most movement disorders, you have to look at the motor symptoms and the non-motor symptoms. So all the studies of echopipin would look closely not only at ticks, which is the target, but ADHD, OCD, anxiety, and depression, because those are so common in patients with Tourette syndrome. So first of all, we have this graph right here, which is a demonstration of the cohort of 149 kids in the study. And two thirds of them had at least one other diagnosis listed right here. The 50 who didn't often had some of those symptoms, just not bad enough to meet criteria for the diagnosis. Then the rest of the analysis takes these groups with the diagnosis or without the diagnosis and splits them out and says, if you had it or you didn't have it, what happens to your symptoms on echopipam or placebo. So each graph shows time, improvement in symptoms, and then symptoms on placebo in orange or symptoms on echopipam in blue. And so you can compare ADHD symptoms, anxiety symptoms, uh, depression symptoms, and OCD symptoms. And the general finding is that patients had improvement in ticks without worsening of those other co-occurring symptoms. I think there's still a lot of kids with Tourette syndrome that are suffering from symptoms where the currently available behavioral and medication treatments aren't helping enough. And so I'm hopeful that new mechanisms of action will treat some of those patients in a better way without causing any other problems for their lives.